CFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome, everybody, to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. And, uh, well, as we said in the update here, we've got a move higher. Uh, the volume is not all that exciting quite yet. Uh, let's see. I know I'm trying to get that done. I'm not exactly sure why it's not doing that. Okay, there we go. Uh, too many pop-ups from all this other stuff. Okay, let's do this, do that. Oh, rats. Okay, we've got a few things going on here. And we'll get them sort sorted in a minute. Okay. And let's see. Got that. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh. Okay. There we go there. Okay. And it still won't let me share my screen. I'm not exactly sure why. Well, we'll try to get this fixed at the next break. Anyway, um, as always, we like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And let's see what else we have here. Okay. Let's get back to everything else already in progress. Up 98 points. And, of course, uh, we talked a little bit about the volume. Just got a little over 10 billion shares on Friday. And at that point, what do you got? You don't have enough volume on the downside. We haven't had enough volume on the upside. And now we're kind of in this trading range. Um, options have pretty much been pointing to around 380 on the S&P, and they really haven't changed much. They may have come down a point or two, so maybe 378. Uh, the question is, uh, at some point, uh, the bears or the bulls are going to win. Uh, it's just very unclear at this moment which side has uh, more power in that. Uh, okay. There we go with that, okay. Okay. Got that, got that. Okay. There we go. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to get this fixed here. Of course, it's never good to try to do it on the air. Okay, not that. Oh, it just, uh, let's see. Oh, I don't know what is the deal here, but it won't let me share the video. I've tried all the things that have worked in the past. Uh, yeah, it's something's going on weird with uh, Discord right at the moment, but we'll get it fixed here in the next break. Mm -hmm. Just thought I could get it fixed here. Uh, anyway, we're uh, starting to look toward earnings. I don't think a lot's going to happen before the end of the day. Uh, Bank of America came out earlier. Um, you know, at this point, you just have to not be a, a total disaster. Uh, take a quick look here. And that's pretty much it. You got a nice gap up uh, in Bank of America. You got to 33.87 today. Volume's pretty good, actually. It looks like the next resistance level is about 35, uh, 35, something in that range. And let's see what else we have here. 
Uh, probably more interesting to me is earnings tomorrow. After the bell tomorrow night, we've got Netflix. Uh, we've got uh, Johnson & Johnson, Lockheed Martin, and Intuitive Surgical. Uh, United Airline and State Streets and Hasbro and J.B. Hunt. So we're starting to get that ramped up a bit, and we'll see uh, uh, what the results are there. But I think overall, we're looking at uh, some other issues. Um, that would be probably overwhelming. Or not how not a good example of that overwhelming uh, would be a better um, see right there. Okay, but why don't we go ahead? Just go ahead and well, we can't see the charts either. So let's see what we can do here for a moment. Okay. Let's see. Got that. Okay. Oh boy. Okay. Every once in a while it's gotta to come to you. That is most everything not working all at once. And of course you got two minutes. Uh, before you've got to uh, be on and everything has to work amazingly before you actually start anything. Let's see. Not here. Let's see if we uh, can actually just get out of that, get it restarted here. Maybe that'll change something. Okay. Uh, see about that. Okay. Now. See. Fix this. There we go. Well, why don't we just uh, go to break here earlier, and I'll try to focus on this so we can get some of these things fixed. Where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter 
the path of least resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 okay we got everything fixed we're back on track and of course I didn't get to do this, but I wanted to. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And what else do we have here? Uh, now let's do a little history and then we'll move on. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1907, Marconi officially opens the first commercial transatlantic wireless telegraph service, which runs between Nova Scotia and Ireland. And, of course, we think of uh, if we're not within uh, 15 seconds of a smartphone, uh, it's the end of the world. Uh, but uh, eh, back then, what? If you could get it across, what was it, about two or three weeks normally, and you could get a message across uh, not too fast, eh, kind of a miracle. On this day in 1907... Yeah, people would laugh at us for our smartphones, thinking that we had some kind of devil in a small device. Okay, uh, now that we've got everything pretty much fixed, let's go ahead and get back to some charts. Come on, there we go. Okay, bring that up. I did want to show Bank of America, and we got that right there. Okay. And you had a nice gap. You're not going to have huge volume. Uh, resistance, as I said, came in about 3530. Uh, when we look at what's uh, coming tomorrow, which I think is much bigger deal in FLX, um, not very bullish on Netflix. Uh, they still have some problems. Uh, could it still bounce to 320 bucks and be in a downtrend? I think it can. Uh, I'm curious about how many subscribers they've lost. Uh, a lot of the shows have just been horrifically bad. Uh, the CGI stuff and a lot of the superhero stuff is just abysmal. And I think a lot of people really notice it's kind of a waste of their time for a lot of uh, not just Netflix, but the rest of them. Uh, we've talked about how there have been 600 different shows uh, scripted shows, that is, ones that last more than a movie or one episode, uh, in uh, Hollywood being produced at the moment. I don't think there's a lot there. The only thing I see uh, bullish in this is a nice double gap at 320. That would probably be the high side. Also, probably everybody and their dogs short just about everything in the market. Um, so I'm not a big fan of being short. Um, 
if I saw some bounces to some decent levels, maybe they get there and then they start rolling back over. Netflix is uh, fairly seasonal. That is, it gets more subscribers in the winter than in the summer. And uh, even though they've uh, exported a great deal of their business around the world, uh, the easiest money, um, that is the highest margin, still uh, comes from the United States. A little bit of uh, Europe, but mostly uh, about, what, five-eighths, almost three-fourths of their profits um, with some kind of net profit come from the United States. But I don't see a lot of people talking about uh, the latest hot thing on Netflix. Uh, and, of course, a lot of these other, you know, some of these things are billion-dollar failures, uh, like the Lord of the Rings reboot. Um, some of them are just half a billion dollars. Uh, and, it, I mean, they would, they, you know, some of them look good, and just the script is unwatch. Uh, the uh, story itself is unwatchable or unfollowable. Some of them, just everything is wrong. But, uh, you know, there's a few things out there that have everybody talking, but uh, not much. So I think the quality has gone dramatically lower, and I think that's going to be a problem for Netflix, Disney, and the rest. Take a quick look at Disney. Uh, Disney did test its low. It didn't test it by that much lighter volume. You are getting a little bounce out here today. You did have a little lighter move on the way down, so you may get a little bit bigger bounce. I think a lot of people, again, you're probably going to see this as, as much as in Disney in the coming years as uh, you do in Netflix, and that is uh, people not subscribing through the summer, and as soon as the weather gets bad out and it gets cold, they probably do a little bit better. My guess, though, is everybody's going to start seeing past that into longer trends. Uh, and whether or not you have a lot of people subscribing, canceling, coming back a couple of months, subscribing for a month, and uh, the kind of hit and run kind of subscribers instead of those that stick with them. Uh, did hear uh, the previous guest uh, not too uh bullish on J and J. I really don't have a lot of insight on it. Um, you're up on light volume today, which would be kind of a negative. Um, but uh, that's, you know, you're back up against resistance, which is 167. Let's see what else we have out here on the next level up. I mean, if you do, if you do break that and you do have a, a decent earnings, um, result once you break that you got a little resistance about 172 uh but you could go to 182 uh back up to the previous high and again uh, a lot of these we'll take a look at these biotechs look like they may have started by bottoming out uh with the rest of the market uh you did have kind of a blowout low oh that's in the wrong one uh, b i b d Um, you do have the IBB back up challenging the October 5th high. You had a fairly monster bullish engulfing. The volume wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. You're still higher than that. Uh, but I don't see a lot that is bearish here. Uh, and uh, I would say that we're probably bullish into Friday's option, uh, options expiration. And that would be it. Okay. Okay, Apple, let's take a look, quick look at that. Um, yes, you did. Well, I'm going to say you got good enough for me, a uh, three-gap play to the bottom on Apple. Uh, that means that you should slowly start seeing this fill back up. Uh, that would say that you have the opportunity to go back up to 164 on Apple. And, you know, could they have a couple of months and everybody uh, ignore the long term? They could. Uh, and that would, uh, again, probably just be a bounce and a downtrend. I'm not wildly bullish on it, 
But uh, I think probably the time to be bearish on it is looking uh, a lot more in the rearview mirror. Let's take a look at uh, Microsoft. Uh, so we've got uh, Microsoft uh, coming back up to its gap down. Gap down was on 30, it was called 38 million shares. Uh, you got about 14 million shares today. You had about 30 on Friday. So you're up a little bit up here. Again, a lot of earnings are gonna probably uh, put a little bit more pressure, but pretty severe resistance at about 240, let's call it 240, 250 for that. Uh, there is a double gap there, which acts uh, generally is twice as strong as a single gap, so much better. Uh, but that 240, 250 uh, is probably the line in the sand uh, for that. Anyway, we'll be back in a minute. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. As we come back, we're going to start looking into earnings tomorrow because I think that's really what's going to matter. Uh, we looked at J&J. Uh, &J. Let's take a look at Lockheed Martin, uh, LMT. Hard to think that uh, this business isn't going to get bigger. Uh, but uh, it is back. I mean, the chart doesn't look very good. We have more energy on the way down than we had on the way up. These are all earnings for tomorrow, by the way. Uh, to See if we see anything in IS. Uh, what is that? Uh, RG. Intuitive Surgical. This is after the market. Uh, J and J and Lockheed Martin are before. 
market open tomorrow. So we've got very light volume in intuitive surgical. Uh, it's really been going sideways for a while. I'm, again, not a big fan of being short down here, as I suspect the bias on the greater market, at least through the end of the week, is higher. Uh, let's see if we see. Uh, we've got Hasbro uh, also before the open. Uh, again, uh, probably the biggest problem with uh, these uh, toy companies is they make a great deal of money on whatever the biggest toy is. Buzz Lightyear was a disaster. Uh, most of these other movies uh, aimed at kids have really not gotten any kind of critical mass yet. Uh, this has just been going sideways. Maybe there's something I'm unaware of uh, out there, but uh, I mean, most of Hasbro and Mattel is linked at some level uh, to the big movies and what's the hot uh, uh, toy. You had uh, probably the last good toy that really sold well was Baby Yoda. And I can't think of anything else that has done well since that. Again, nothing but sideways action on that. Uh, M-A-T is Mattel. Take a quick look for that one. See if there's anything else. This one looks a little bit better. I mean, at least it's been kind of going up. But I think you can make the same kind of claim, and that is, for all practical purposes, Mattel has been going sideways since uh, the 4th of October into this. Again, yeah, I, maybe somebody knows in the den uh, of some great show that's caught in the imagination of kids. But uh, I think Baby Yoda has been it. I wonder if that's going to be the last one as we balkanize, that's B-A-L, not vulcanize like Spock, but balkanize uh, the uh, uh, video that we watch. Uh, okay. So that's one. Let's go back to the rest. J.B. Hunt. J.B. H.T. Uh, no real word yet uh, on anything coming out of, at least that I could find in the uh, train saga for the unions. Uh, this one, I would, like I said, is kind of like watching uh, the hurricane. If all that blows up in somebody's faces, it's all about uh, probably J.B. Hunt and these other trucking uh, companies that are going to have to take on uh, the brunt of moving uh, cargo around that would normally be on rails. Uh, so, you know, this is earnings tomorrow. I don't see any reason to get in front of it, but uh, I would keep an eye on the headlines. And if anything really bad happens on the train fronts and the unions, uh, that would be probably my go-to one uh, on something happening. Let's take a look at what we have for Wednesday for earnings. Um, I saw a bunch of people out blabbing today that said it was all about Netflix and Tesla. I'm not exactly sure. And that is uh, Tesla's back down on its previous lows. Volume really didn't decrease. Um, I don't know. The energy is about the same on the way up, on the way down. But it does kind of seem that uh, maybe the tide has finally turned for the permabulls and Tesla. Uh, where they're not, uh, at least most of them are talking, if it could bounce back up to 260, they'd be pretty happy. Uh, maybe this is the long sl uh, slide that eventually gets them priced the same as most of the other uh, big car manufacturers. Uh, I still think a lot of people are really hot on this. But now you've got a lot of competition. You've got the Ford F-150, gives you the, the truck, and that's well out in front of uh, Tesla shipping their truck, uh, you have a lot of other cars, especially the uh, for if people are on a budget, the smaller uh, cars from Hyundai and Kia um, that have pretty small ranges. But if you're, you know, if you're retired and you don't do anything more than drive around town, uh, probably fine for an EV. And, you know, you get uh, some tax credits, uh, probably pretty good, I think. Some of those you can get around $45,000. Uh, the average selling price of a Tesla is still over $100,000. Uh, 
Uh, so is the Ford F-150. Uh, so uh, the EV version of it. So maybe we finally got to it. There hadn't been a real clear indication other than the top, which came in uh, very well. And that was a 117 million share high on August 16th. That came in at 314. You got it at 313 with half the volume. And it's been uh, on the downside ever since. Uh, but you probably are around good support levels. question would be uh, how many people are going to pre-short Tesla going into tomorrow because there's just as many bulls, perma bulls, as perma bears in Tesla. But uh, I, it's probably more about what happens in China. I think a lot of the sell-off lately has been uh, what they've done in China and the overall ec uh, economy in China slowing down. Uh, okay. He sold a lot. He sold three fourths already that he needed to, to somebody in the den was bringing up. He sold three fourths of uh, the amount of money he needed, and that was three months ago. So I'm not exactly sure where that comes from. Uh, to, to or that he's even buying it. Okay. But maybe that's part of it. You can still be wrong and the price go down and you can be actually right on your call. So not everybody's going to actually pick it up correctly. We've got a little bit under 7 billion shares. So still kind of a light volume day on this push higher. Let's take a quick on the, uh, these real quick. Okay. 36.79. Still not much of the way of movement. Uh, anyway, uh, a lot of people talking about Tesla and, and uh, Netflix as being the big movers out there. I don't know if you're going to get that. Generally, when everybody tells me that, they're the ones that don't move. It's the surprises uh, that tend to get to you. That's why I'm looking at uh, these. Uh, other things going on, Alcoa, uh, as a lot of people continue to look uh, in the uh, base metals. Come on. There we go. Uh, again, yeah, you can make a big case that you've been going sideways uh, since the 4th on Alcoa. So there isn't a lot. Uh, you got big volume days where really didn't much didn't happen on the uh, grand scheme of things. We'll look at a few more. Las Vegas Sands when we return. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. As we come back, we're looking into earnings tomorrow and probably in the next couple of days. I uh, wanted to look at Las Vegas Sands, LVS, to get here. Again, the market's been uh, yeah, very quiet here. And just a couple of points, although we're holding higher. Be interesting to see whether short sellers uh, will uh, blink before the close. Um, about the same volume at the lows as it was. You had some nice moves uh, higher a few days ago as uh, China decided that it was going to open up Macau again. That really didn't last any time whatsoever. Now you're just back down at these lows. And I think most of it uh, is uh, the deterioration of the economy of China. Uh, they've been absolutely crippled by the uh, zero tolerance and lockdowns. Not sure it actually did them any good. I think a lot of the uh, lockdowns were there to uh, uh, make sure that they didn't have any giant uh, riots and overthrow the government. Uh, but uh, we shall see. Anyway, uh, you did get down. You almost touched the low. You were about, what, 20, 19 cents higher uh, from the October 14th low to September 23rd low. Volume was about the same, though. Energy was just slightly more to the downside. Uh, so the question is, when does China decide to uh, uh, let the Kraken go, release the Kraken? Almost said it wrong. I know many people would be upset. Uh, release the Kraken. Uh, but uh, that uh, you don't really have a good signal on that one, at least for price and volume. Uh, I got a question to take a little quick look at the TLT. This broke through. Didn't do much. You had a lot of volume on the day after it broke through. Of course, the uh, 10th, it was the bond market was actually closed. You went sideways the next day, sideways a little, up a little bit. The next day, down, uh, up, and a reverse. Um, this could be a longer pattern of a uh, uh, false breakdown, uh, but you don't have any signal. You need to close back above $100.90 on the TLT. Um, again, not a lot of volume today. Question is, will the uh, Fed or the Treasury start blinking a lot more like they're uh, in one of those uh, ransom videos where they're trying to uh, give us uh, some message in Morse code by their blinks? But uh, unknown. Uh, I would watch for this. We didn't look at. The dollar index, which we will do now. Uh, real quick, 
just a second. Okay. There we go. No. Okay. Come on. There we go. Come on. Yeah. One of those days. I'll go back to that later. Maybe I can get it during the break on the dollar index. Okay. Other things. Now let's go back to earnings. So I haven't gotten through them all. Uh, to, to got uh, Procter and Gamble. Generally, this is uh, where everybody goes to hide because it's the stuff that you buy anyway. Um, you do look like you had kind of a false breakdown out of the low of the 30th of September. Uh, you're back into that low right now. Well, that looked bad, but again, none of this stuff really kind of jumps out at you as saying you've got a very significant edge in the market on any of these. Let's go ahead into Thursday. Uh, we're going to take a look at AT&T. Again, a lot of these things look like they you're either coming back up to resistance uh, or they were a false breakdown. You really never had the huge sign of strength or excuse me, huge sign of weakness to the downside. Uh, you actually had the strongest day was an up day uh, on the 13th. Um, resistance, though, comes in at about fifteen dollars and seventy five cents. So that's about all you've got on that. And see what else. Okay, Snap. This has uh, been one that has traditionally moved a great deal on earnings. Uh, it's really done nothing but go sideways also. I certainly wouldn't want to be short this, uh, being a under around $10 stock. Uh, upside uh, would be about 13 bucks, I would imagine. Uh, a lot of people short this, I've noticed, uh, on... Uh, a mass of shorting a lot. Uh, we do have uh, CSX. And again, this could be a hot potato if anything happens uh, in the negotiations uh, for the, uh, what are they, train union? Train workers? I don't know what they're called. Uh, they work on the trains. Uh, you're back up to uh, the last high on the 4th. You had about 15 million shares that day. You got about 11 now so you're going to get close back that of course that's on thursday what else do we have out here also union pacific uh, p question is just uh what's the upside if uh they do end up signing a contract and everything gets handled on the labor front opposed to that but uh right now uh as i look at it resistance is at about 204 we also have uh, FCX, which is uh, Freeport McMoran. Of course, uh, another favorite uh, uh, in the den when it comes to playing, uh, what do they call them? Not bare metals, uh, regular metals, not the shiny kind of, not the, uh, not the shiny kind of metals, but the regular kind of metals. Uh, and uh, again, you got, uh, what is normally determined to be a tweezer top or bottom that uh, you've got nothing but an inside day on today. So you've got support at about uh, 2750. Uh, again, probably the biggest uh, influence on FCX would be a change in the zero tolerance policy on COVID in China. So yeah, I don't know how you do that because it's going to be a headline. But, you know, if you see the headline, we're to head. Uh, tractor Supply, Whirlpool. I don't see those really moving the markets very much. Uh, we got Friday, we got uh, Verizon and Goldman Sachs. Let's look at uh, Verizon first. Uh, yeah, it, a lot of these kind of look like they were false breakouts to the bottom. You're kind of back into this trading range. And then, uh, of course, on Friday, we've got Goldman Sachs. 
and uh, yeah, he had kind of a nice bottom, a nice turnaround. Resistance though, probably about 315. We'll be back in a minute. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Of course, it's going to be a big week, normally a uh, bullish bias for uh, options expiration on Friday. Uh, and uh, hey, right now, it's like I said earlier in the show, really hadn't moved much. Uh, options have been pointing on the spies around 380. Uh, and that got to, I think, 378 on Friday. Uh, probably the most interesting thing as I close the show out was something I put in the newsletter this morning. And that is that we had one of the uh, 10 lowest lows on the put call ratio for the VIX on Friday. So everybody uh, almost, uh, I think it was 15%. 15% of people were buying puts on Friday. That always makes me nervous because that means that probably a lot of people that would normally short would be there. And they're all thinking of turning bullish together. Now, 
can that work for a little while? Yes, but it's problematic. But you go back 20 years and find the 10 days out of 20 years uh, that uh, the put call was extremely low. Uh, about eight out of those 10 days uh, ended up with uh, horrific downsides. So it's not 100 percent. I don't think of anything in the market that is. You only have a uh, higher probability of something else to happen. Now, does that mean that we can't go higher for the week and then come down next week? Um, I would love to see um, one more retest. Uh, a lot of people get bearish and then the market head higher because that's generally the way things work. But uh, when you look at the uh, put call ratios and all that, everybody thinks we're going to th uh, probably 380 on the spies this week. Sell when you can, not when you have to. We'll be back tomorrow, and uh, hopefully we'll have things figured out a little bit better. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible.